Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. Research, huh? I can't help you there. But you're free to ask around inside. Just don't start any trouble. I suppose. The door on the left goes to the stairwell. From there, just keep heading west. I suppose. Hangar deck, right in the middle of the ship. Can't miss it. I suppose. Dr. Preston is in the upper deck, four section. That's the top interior floor in the southwest end. I suppose. The common room is free, but the beds are lousy. It's on the midship deck. A big open room with lots of beds. You can't miss it. If you want to sleep well rested, rent a room from Vera Weatherly. She's on the upper deck. I suppose. It doesn't work like that. I'm in charge of security. Dr. Lee runs most of everything else. Bannon kinda represents the merchants. He also owns Potomac Attire. I suppose. It doesn't work like that. I'm in charge of security. Dr. Lee runs most of everything else. Bannon kinda represents the merchants. He also owns Potomac Attire. She's one of the members of the council. Runs the science lab here. Don't bother her unless it's important. Her lab is in the stern end of the ship. We're the safest, most secure city in the wasteland. Nothing can get in here without our say-so. I don't exactly have time to worry about the history around here, now do I? I've got to worry about what's happening on it now. Carry on, then. I'm on duty. Make it quick. She's some sort of genius. You know, one of those egghead scientist types. Her lab is in the stern end of the ship. Later. Welcome. Welcome to Potomac Attire. I am Bannon, proprietor and city council member. I carry discriminating attire for discriminating customers. Between you and me, keeping out the riffraff is good for business. Dr. Lee, Chief Harkness, and I are all on the council. We meet every Monday morning. I can be very influential, if you know what I mean. Far more than Seagrave Holmes. A threat? No, of course not. Well, maybe. He wants to replace me on the council. He's a shady character. I just can't prove it. Now, if someone were to find something incriminating in his room, well, let's just say I would be very appreciative. It's a place to live, safe from raiders and super mutants. With Dr. Lee on our side, maybe we can even begin to rebuild the world. Straight to the point, I like that.
Thanks. Why, I practically set this whole place up. When I got here 12 years ago, it was just a handful of dead-enders squatting in a rusted-out rowboat. Now I'm on the council, and with my leadership, we're the strongest settlement in the wastes. Of course, a few of those dead-enders still stick around, but who'd want to leave? Well, yes, but it was hardly any place of importance until I arrived on the scene. That's all ancient history now. No one would ever care about it. If you insist on wasting your time on that, you could try that bartending old crone down below, Bell Bonnie. Come back soon. Welcome to a quick fix. This is a quick fix. I mean, that's the name of our shop. Polly and mine, that is. My name is Cindy. Cindy Cantelli. Oh, okay. Well, let me know if you want anything. To buy, that is. Well, I don't really know, to tell the truth. How does any city get started, really? But I've heard Bannon talk about how he was responsible for its success. So I'd ask him about it. We've got all kinds of chems. Another satisfied customer. I'm sure you'll be back soon. Morning. <coughs> Welcome. This here is Flack and Shrapnel's gun shop. Pretty catchy, huh? Take a look around. If you see anything you like, I'll be right over here. Here, in Rivet City? I'm packing, and most of the rest of these guys are packing. Not to mention security. Fred, I can't help you, pal. Been here for years, but all I know about the history is that it's a safe place to settle down. Maybe Bannon can help you out. He sure acts like he knows it all. Need to do some killing, eh?
Thanks. If you need more ammo, this is where to get it. Let me introduce myself. I am Gary Staley, gourmet chef and gourmand. I'll be preparing your meal. My specialty is Meyer Lurk cakes, although the iguana is very popular too. Then you are in for a treat. I know a lot of places opened up when they got the hydroponics bay working, but that's hardly the start of it all, is it? Actually, Vera Weatherly might know more. She's always here and talking with folks, so if anyone's picked up a story or two, it'd be her. Here is our menu, sir. Give me a shout if you need anything else. Thank you for coming to Gary's Galley. One of the new immigrants died of radiation poisoning last week. Yeah. Morning. I heard she was drinking river water. The ship's water isn't much better. If we don't get fresh water soon, we'll all end up like her. Don't tell me your problems. I'll be right with you. Welcome to Gary's Galley. Can I take your order? It's named after my dad. He's a great cook. She's not very social. Stays in her lab in the stern. She's smart, though. Real smart. It's noisy, dark, and smelly. But we're safe here. No super mutants or raiders. And maybe Dr. Lee will find a way to get clean water for us. Here's a menu. A pleasure doing business with you. You mean like hitting on me? No. Most of them are polite. Even the ones like Diego that I'd want to flirt with seem to ignore me. Well, one of us is. Sometimes it seems like he doesn't even know I'm there. Really? Oh, thank you. I just know I can seduce Diego with this. Then you'll have to marry me. <laughs> we'll be so happy. I heard the place was settled by mercenaries who used to scavenge DC, but I don't really know. Thank you for coming to Gary's Galley.
There was some sort of battle in the city yesterday. The gate guard says the gun was Why don't you look where you're going? I am Father Clifford. This is St. Monica's Church. She is the patron saint of lost children. Very popular among the faithful of Ribbit City. I'm surprised you've never heard of her. If you want to hear her story, it will be the topic of my sermon on Sunday. Services begin at 8 a.m. You should come. I wouldn't betray one of God's children. Besides, we don't do that anymore. It's been risky of late. We shut the railroad down. The last one was different. I heard a lot of people are looking for him. That's all I know. May the Lord guide him to safety. You would? I mean, certainly. We humbly accept whatever you can spare. However, St. Monica looks most favorably on donations of 100 caps or more. A most generous offer. God bless you. Yes, my flock is all of Rivet City. You should come to services this Sunday. I'll be telling the tale of St. Monica. Oh, it's not the past of the city that I dwell upon but the future of its inhabitants. But if you're interested, I believe Miss Weatherly or Mr. Bannon would be glad to speak with you on the subject. St. Monica bless you. I'm Diego, the acolyte for St. Monica's. St. Monica saved her own son's soul from eternal damnation. She is now the patron saint of lost children for the faithful everywhere. You really should come to church on Sunday mornings. The sermon will be all about St. Monica. Oh yes, Father Clifford conducts services every Sunday morning. You should come. Father Clifford, the sanctuary is in the ship's fore on the upper deck. The good father holds services every Sunday morning. I heard tell the place used to be run by raiders until someone cleared the whole place out, but I don't really know for sure. God bless you.
It's locked for a reason. Don't get any ideas. I'm looking for troublemakers. Have you seen any? Yes, that's locked. And yes, I can see you eyeing it. Welcome to the Weatherly Hotel. I'm your hostess, Vera Weatherly. Why should I tell you? You'll just tell everyone else. Well, I could tell you all about my hotel. But I'm sure I don't know anything about how Rivet City itself got started. I mean, you hear rumors and you make guesses, but I really couldn't say I know for sure and I'd hate to lead you down the wrong path. Well, if it'll help, I once heard that this place was covered in Myrlurks 50 years ago, raiding all around the city. Eventually, some poor soul they thought would be lunch fought back and cleared out the whole ship. He set up the city in their place. They say he was the first counselor for the upper deck and lived here to his death. Can't say I believe it a bit. But it's a nice tale to tell. You haven't heard? Angela has the hots for Diego. But since he's a priest, he's been putting her off. One of these days, she's just going to jump his bones. They say Mr. Lopez is losing it. He stands on the top of the bridge tower for hours at a time, just staring out over the city. Only 120 caps. You won't get a better deal than that. Okay, then. She's not very social. Stays in her lab in the stern. She's smart, though. Real smart. 
It's noisy, dark, and smelly. But we're safe here. No super mutants or raiders, and maybe Dr. Lee will find a way to get clean water for us. Take a look at our menu. Thanks. Farewell. Is your room comfortable, Miss, uh, sister? Yeah, it's just fine. Unless, of course, you want to warm my bed for me. Huh? Then Welcome to the Weatherly. Mr. Buckingham at your service. This is the Weatherly Hotel. It's the finest establishment in Rivet City. Yes, sir. Stop bothering. Nice to see you. I am at your service. something. Remember that child that fell off the deck last year? Yeah, that was bad. I'm sure they'll do something about it. Hey there. This place won't clean itself. That's my job. I heard that the city council is debating putting railings on the flight deck. Well, I hope they do something. Remember that child that fell off the deck last year? Yeah, that was bad. I'm sure they'll do something about it. You're in the Revit City Clinic. I'm Dr. Preston. That old story? Well, now, I haven't heard talk of that in quite some time. It was all just a rumor, a hoax. Someone's idea of a practical joke. Story was, there was an android, escaped from the Commonwealth up north, from someplace called the Institute. There was a hollow tape that got circulated. I think I've got a copy of it. Yeah, here it is. Give it a listen. That's a man's voice. Hoax for sure. Like I said, it's a hoax. Don't bother with it. Someone sent tapes like that to pretty much every doctor in the wasteland. None of us believed it. Oh, I'd like to help. I really would. But I don't know the first thing about this place's history. Don't let my age fool you. 
I may have been around for a while, but I didn't spend all that time here. Don't get any cute ideas. Security is just a shout away. Now, if you've got any medical issues, let's hear them. Sure can. Quick and easy. Only 100 caps. And a quick shot. All done. Take care of yourself. If you're listening to this recording, it is because you're believed to be trustworthy. I hope that is the case, because this recording puts us both in danger. I'm escaping from the Commonwealth. I'm an android, a synthetic man, a slave. The men hunting me are ruthless and will stop at nothing to retrieve their property. I need to find a doctor in the wasteland to perform facial reconstruction. I also need someone who knows a great deal about computers. I need... I need to have my memories erased and my face altered to look like someone else. You'll never guess who just showed up at my place. That android catcher from the Commonwealth. At first, I thought he was going to kill me. But it turns out he's an android himself. And he's gone rogue. I didn't believe him at first. But I'm convinced he's telling the truth. We need to find him a place to hide along the railroad. He also insists that we help him locate a trusted doctor. Tamper with that, and we're going to have a problem. Yes. Please excuse me. There is much work to be done. I help Dr. Lee when she needs equipment moved. I am no scientist. I just help with the heavy things. What's at stake? You won't tell me what's at stake. Vega. 
The reason secrecy, a robot's a robot, Zimmer, no matter how shiny the paint job. Now, please. Ignorance and facetiousness. That's all you people are good for. Shiny paint job, indeed. You can't even imagine the Commonwealth's accomplishments. You know, if you're so smart, maybe you could help us, hmm? But no, that never even crossed your mind. Go peddle your selfishness somewhere else. Fine, but I'm not leaving. Not until I've spoken to Dr. Lee. I'll be here when she's ready to abandon her chemistry set and talk real science. Suit yourself. Yes? You there. What are you, some kind of lab assistant? No, you look a bit more weathered. Are you by any chance for hire? To the point. I like that. Well, as it turns out, I've misplaced some very sensitive property. Hmm. How do I put this in a way you'll understand? All you know of robots are those buckets of bolts, those Mr. Handshakers and whatnot. Well, that's not all a robot can be. You see, in the Commonwealth, we've made artificial persons, synthetic humanoids, programmed to think and feel and do whatever we need. And occasionally, they get confused and wander off. Nonsense! This is a machine we're talking about. Can you enslave a generator or a water purifier? Of course not. The same principle applies. But let's get back to your mission. You are to find this missing android. I've tracked him to somewhere here in the capital wasteland. He must have done something drastic, like facial surgery and a mind wipe, or else I would have found him by now. It will be no easy task. He may not even realize he's an android. Don't upset him by talking with him. Just come get me immediately. I'll handle it. I'm sorry, it slipped my mind. I have at my disposal advanced technology from the Commonwealth. I'd be willing to share some of it with you. Just think, you'll be the envy of all your friends. Excellent! Locate my android and you won't be disappointed. Here, listen to this message he sent me. He's mocking me. I swear, I'll make him pay for that. Forget everything you know about robots. Those buckets are mere children's toys compared to the real thing. Androids have fake skin and blood and are programmed to simulate human behavior, like breathing. They can even eat and digest food realistically. Like I said, I suspect he's had facial reconstruction and possibly even a mind wipe. Search the offices of doctors or techies for android information. If he's come into contact with these people, there may be records. Start with Dr. Preston. He lives on this leaky boat. See if he knows anything. He's a doctor, after all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy trying to ignore my surroundings. Maybe, maybe he didn't exactly wander off. Maybe he fled, escaped captivity, as it were, if he began to misinterpret his situation. It's possible my android sought to forget his previous life, wipe away all memory, all guilt, trick himself into believing he really is human. 
So no, he may not be just an ordinary robot, but he's certainly not human, no matter how badly he wishes it so. I made him, I want him. End of story. By God, you're as annoying as you are clever. Very well, I'll tell you what you want to know, if it helps you locate my property. The duty of this particular unit was the hunting and capturing of other escaped androids. Yes, others have escaped. It's one of the side effects of having such an advanced AI. Machines start to think for themselves, fool themselves into believing they have rights. And so, this particular android may have believed he'd done something wrong, immoral, and wanted to forget those deeds. Satisfied now? This particular android, designation A321, is different, special. The most advanced synthetic humanoid I've ever developed. The others, like my escort Armitage there, are all older models, easily replicated. Ah, but A321? It will take years to recreate him. So you see, this android must be located at all costs. The others are all acceptable losses, but A321? He is irreplaceable. Ah, you've managed to sniff the trail. Good job. Keep me informed on your progress. Well, why are you still standing there? Hey there. Hmm. The sooner you find my property, the sooner I can get out of this slum. Really, how do you people live like this? The Commonwealth itself is nothing but a war-ravaged quagmire of violence and despair. Inside the sealed environment of the Institute, however... But... The Institute's affairs are none of your concern. Your undeveloped mind couldn't even begin to comprehend what we've accomplished. Looks to me like a giant boat ran aground and a bunch of savages moved in. History lesson over. A circuit neuralizer? Here in the wasteland? How'd they manage to get their grubby hands on one of those? Impressive. You are showing signs of intelligence and resourcefulness. You might turn out useful after all. But you're wasting time talking to me. Did you hear about the fight in the muddy rudder last? What do you need? He's from up north. He was bragging about how great it is up there. Yeah, great. They can't even keep tabs on their robots. She's certainly head and shoulders above most everyone else around here. Though, that's not saying much. Look, some of us are trying to get work done here. There have been enough disruptions recently. Anybody coming through here would have to talk to Dr. Lee. Why don't you go bother her about it? Yeah, see you. Yep. Yeah. Hey there. Gonna have to replace some tables and chairs. 
I'm Janice Kaplinski, Chief Botanist. What do you need? Other than him being an egotistical, arrogant, condescending pain in the ass, nothing. He's from the Commonwealth. He's come looking for some special robot. I must admit I'm rather curious, but I have other work to do. If it hasn't got to do with the science quarters, I'm probably not the one to ask. And Dr. Lee's so busy, you really shouldn't disturb her work. So long. I'm sure she'll just scrounge some from the lower deck. Yes? Janice, have you overbalanced the chemical mix? They should be just fine. Try it again. Garza, when you get a chance... Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... It's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's son, aren't you? What are you doing here? You were too young to remember, and I suppose James never spoke of me. Typical. I am Dr. Madison Lee. I worked with your parents many years ago. Now I run the science lab here in Rivet City. It was all I had left. When your mother died, your father decided to leave with you. He abandoned our work. We had no choice but to do the same. You mean you haven't? I assumed he sent you here. For that matter, aren't you supposed to be in a vault? James said he left you there. Did you? I was under the impression that's exactly the opposite of what he wanted for you. Well, you won't find him here. He's come and gone already. Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and head it off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. It's in the old Jefferson Memorial Building, northwest of here. Please, don't go after him. It was foolish of him to even think about going there alone. I suppose so. I worked with them for several years until... Until your mother died, and your father decided it was time to leave. What else do you want to know? Yes. Your mother was... Well, she was a good woman. A very dedicated scientist. Your father loved her very much. It was a shame that she died. She had been excited to meet you. Complications from childbirth. None of us were expecting it. We weren't as prepared as we could have been. You have to understand, we were struggling with scavenged, derelict equipment. We did everything we could. Yes, well, um, uh, I'm sorry it wasn't enough. James, he was very driven. Determined to change the world. <laughs> well, we all were back then, I suppose. He was focused on two things, really. Making Project Purity work, and your mother. When she died, I think... I think he gave up. I know he wanted to keep you safe. But I think part of what he did was run away. But it seems that he never really was able to get over the idea. I'm frankly shocked that he waited all this time and wants to try again. Okay. What do you want to know? Okay. Look, I don't want to be harsh, but I have problems of my own. I don't have the resources to support James's foolish endeavors or your chasing after him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I am not in a position to help you. You understand, I have enough to worry about already. What? Well, I... I'm not sure what there is to tell. Your father and I, we worked together for a long time. I, I think we were really on to something. But then there were complications. The project was abandoned and your father disappeared. 
I returned here to Rivet City and established the lab you see before you now. Project Purity, we called it. What do you want to know? It was simple, really. Fresh, clean water for everyone. Such a simple idea, and yet so impossible to realize. The plan was to build a facility that could purify all the water in the tidal basin at once. No radiation, no muck, just clear water. It just turned out to be more difficult than we anticipated. We had the basic principles down, we understood most of the science behind it, but the radiation in the area is so pervasive. Small-scale tests were fine, but any time we tried to test the process on a larger scale, it was just... too much. Maybe if we'd had more time, or better equipment. You happened. It wasn't just you, we had more problems than we could handle already, but your birth is what finally pushed it over the edge. Your father decided that you were more important than everything we'd been working for, and he left. He left all of us. Once he was gone, the Brotherhood decided we weren't worth their time anymore. Without their protection, we had to abandon the purifier. Okay. This is the Rivet City Science Lab. It's taken many long years to put together, but we've done well for ourselves. Our work on portable fusion power and hydroponics are coming along quite nicely, if not quite according to schedule. Oh, that man doesn't have you looking for his pet android, does he? I've already told him to lay off it. He's distracting my entire team. Rivet City is one of the few bastions of civilization left in the land. We're working to rebuild our society, to make the world livable again. I could tell you all about the science lab, but even though I was here near the start, I can't really help with the details of how it all worked out. It all seems like a lifetime ago. I'm afraid I've had a lot of things on my mind since those early days. Good luck finding your father. Remove the empty water tanks in the gardens and put in the fresh ones. Certainly, Jens. Oh, come on. Pay more attention to what you're doing.
They call me sister. Don't ask. Are you making fun of my name? It's a damn good thing for you this place is crawling with security. Otherwise, I'd kick your ass. I'm eating right now. If you're hurt, I'll be back in the clinic shortly. No, no. Just call me father, not mister. Sometimes I think Vera programmed you that way just to annoy me. I'll just have one. I heard that the city council Are you ready was debating to putting the railings area? on the flight deck. Not yet. Well, Give me a few I minutes, Mr. something. Remember that child that? that fell off the deck last year? Well, my hey there. Friend. Yeah. How are we doing that was today? Bad. I'm, I'm sure they'll do the something about it. I have been programmed. I heard hey that there. the city oh, council is debating putting railings on the flight deck. Well, I hope they do something. That was a fine meal. Remember that child that fell off the deck last year? I am at your service. That was bad. I'm sure... Welcome back, sir. Farewell. They'll do something about it. I heard the city council is debating. I really hope you're not thinking of breaking into there. Well, I hope they do something. Remember that child that fell off the deck last year? Yeah, that was bad. I'm sure they'll do something about it. Evening. You don't look hurt. What can I do for you? Like I said, it's a hoax. Don't bother with it. Someone sent tapes like that to pretty much every doctor in the wasteland. None of us believed it. Take care of yourself. Did you hear about the fight in the muddy rudder last night? Evening. Evening. Yeah. Bell's going to have to Everything looks okay here. Stairs. No. Sure I haven't seen anything. Welcome to... Howdy, I'm Seagrave. Seagrave Holmes. I have a little of just about everything here. A what? Look, if you just want to crack wise, go somewhere else. But if you've got stuff you want to sell, then I'm your man. I think most of the people from back then have either moved on or passed away, sorry to say. Shh! They might be listening. The Commonwealth has tried to make it out to be a hoax, but the escaped android is real, I tell you. Listen to this holotape. It will make you a believer, too. Steal it? Hardly. He runs the council like it's his own personal bank account. He's supposed to represent all the market businesses, not just himself. It's about time he was replaced. Oh, I really wouldn't know. I mean, long as I can remember, she's just been here, soaking up all the repairs and attention we can give her. I grabbed a wrench and joined in the reconstruction pretty much first thing out of the womb, but I never really cared about the politics. Last feller I remember from back then was Mr. Pinkerton, and he must have left about a decade ago, after that spat with the science team. He used to have a storage shed in the broken off bow of the ship. We always thought he was crazy for keeping stuff there. Might have kept a couple records down there, I guess. Careful, though. Ship's a bit treacherous down there in her belly. Oh, well, the old girl had seen a lot of damage, especially where the Mirelurks used to nest, and where the super mutants kept trying to get in. 
I guess the mutants and the Myers got so busy fighting each other, it gave us the time we needed to make this place shipshape. Does that tell you what you need to know? Anyway, we're here in Rivet City, and she's in good hands now. Oh, right. I sort of lose track of time talking about the old girl. I've got a little bit of everything. Give me a shout if you need anything else. See you later. Hey. Good to see you. Stay away from me. What do you want? Are you one of them? I suppose it doesn't matter if I tell you. I used to be a slave. I saw a slaver on this ship. His name is Sister. I'm afraid he's after me. Really? Oh, thank you. Can you help me? I've been so worried with him around. I can hardly sleep at night. Thank you. I'll go to Flack and Shrapnel's just before closing. I don't have anything to give you, but I think I can trust you with a secret. If you ever go up north, there is a secret slave hideout called Temple of the Union. You might find them useful. <clears throat> what do you want? I ain't scared, and I ain't your son. Any other stupid questions, asshole? <clears throat> I was so noisy last night I could hardly sleep. Hey, maybe a quick fix don't or something slouch. that will help you sleep. Chew Sam's your food. Got two oh, more don't cakes. give me that Hello, one. Mister. I'll slap it right off your that. face. I do the repairs around here, so strangers. if you see something that needs fixing, let me know. May I take your order? Meyerlick cakes and a beer. This place could use a few more people willing to work. Everything is falling apart. I'm the only one willing to Evening. fix it. Dad, can I I'm be busy. I've got a lot of repairs James? to make. Not yet, sweetheart. Finish your meal first.
Hey there. Oh, I don't know about that. For all I know, it's had survivors on it since the war. I'm just thankful it's here. Maybe if you ask Bannon. He's been simply wonderful on the council, so I'm sure he'd be glad to help with your question. Henry's my husband. I have a daughter, CJ, too. You'll see her running around here with James Hargrave. We're the lucky ones. We don't have to fight just to survive. We have normal jobs. I clean the halls. It might not look like it, but you should have seen it before. Goodbye. I'm going I think to I'll go have some fun. I'm busy. I've got a lot of repairs to make. Hey. Anything going on? Hey. Everything looks okay here.
That's secure for a reason. How the hell did you get in here? Hmm. <laughs> I suppose you can't be all that bad if you made it this far without dying. This is the part where you tell me what the hell you are doing bothering an old man who obviously wants to be left alone. Get on with it already. I live here. It's where I do my work. And it's far away from Dr. Lee and all those other monkeys dressed up like scientists. You made it past my defenses, which proves you aren't a dummy. And you haven't killed me. So I suppose you aren't here to do that. I suppose you can hang around if you want. Just don't touch anything. The secret kind. Well, if you must know, I'm an electrician and computer expert. And I'm a bit of a surgeon. Really, the most gifted scientist you'll find. <laughs> and the guy that got Rivet City up and running in the first place. And after all that, Lee and her gang of flunkies pushed me out. Ha! <laughs> Project Purity, indeed. But a bunch of morons. They can't even clean some water. What? I have better things to do than yak about those backstabbers up topside. Now get going. Ha! Sounds like you've been poking around, all right. I'm surprised any of those reprobates even remember me. Maybe they still laugh about how they edged me out of the council back then. But you can set the record straight. For that, you have to go all the way back to when remnants of the Naval Research Institute cleared the Meyer Lurks off this wreck about 40 years ago. We were looking for new lab space, and this bucket of bolts just happened to have a well-preserved science bay on it. Everything else just grew up around that lab once we got it up and running. The science team was led by one H. Pinkerton. That lasted until about 18 years ago, when those ambitious backbiters like Lee and her little team showed up. She came in with her big purity project pipe dream, and my whole staff started working with her, those traitors. She even took my seat on the council. By then, I was glad to leave it behind. But hell if I'm leaving the city I made great. Of course I do. A good scientist always keeps track of their data. Here. They probably don't even remember, but I kept the records of that first council meeting. Take them, if it'll put them in their place. Don't let your guard down.
Stay sharp. They're everywhere. Don't let your guard down.
I wish there were more people like you in the world. I want you to have this. I hope it helps keep you safe. Please, keep doing what you do. Any luck finding out how Rivet City got started? Aha! Not just as easy as asking around, was it? Good information takes real work to uncover after all. So, tell me all about it. data looks legitimate. An outgrowth of a science station, huh? Hmm. Just goes to show what I always say about cleverness. A bit of smarts leads to a big reward, huh? Uh, speaking of which, in thanks, have a few of these for the next time you've got to be quick on your wits. Oh, and I'll let the Rivet City traders know they'll be favorably mentioned in the book. You'll get a discount buying gear from them in the future. I've got to do a section on working with old computer electronics. So there's some research to be done in the old Robco production facility. Also, there used to be a big library out there. Imagine a whole building full of books. I'll need you to gather information there for me. And that'll be it for the last chapter. So what'll it be? It does, doesn't it? I mostly just deal with it after it's junked, but a trader gave me this Robco processor widget. He said it's worth a fortune. According to him, if it's connected to the mainframe in the Robco factory, you could have access to all the robots you'd ever want. Now that would be a great example of how to harness technology, wouldn't it? Yeah, you should just be able to plug it into the mainframe at the Robco production facility. It'll give you access to the robots and terminals. Okay, here, and be sure to keep an eye peeled for any other examples of how to make old technology work for you out there. Heard a rumor a while back that it was some guy named Pinkerton at Rivet City. Apparently he's got some sweet tech stashed on that boat. Good luck with that research.
What do you need? I sure am, Sonny. What have you got for me? Are you serious? Why, I'll be. Thank you, stranger. I can't tell you what this means to Megaton. Well, back to work. 